Hello, hello. What is up, everybody? It is your girl, Lady Sola. And today, I will be giving my reactions to Insecure Season 5, Episode 1. I'm going to give a brief synopsis of basically the parts of the episode that stood out to me the most. And I'm also going to talk about my favorite um, moments in, in the episodes. Issa Rae and company have come a long way um, with this show as well as everything else she is doing professionally. I'm so happy for her, so proud of her. And you know, I'm sad. I'm sad that this is the last season. As I've mentioned before, I feel like this could have went to six seasons. I think we could have got just one more, one more season. But she's saying Insecure season five. She feels that the story arc and everything is in full completion in five seasons. So there's really nothing we can do about it. We can cry, we can complain, but this is where we're at. Let's get into it. Episode one, reunited. Okay. So the highlights from this episode is that the group is going to San Francisco uh, to attend Stanford University's 10-year reunion. So we got Tiffany, we got Kelly, Molly, Issa, and Derek, uh, Tiffany's husband. A few things that stood out to me, obviously the matching uh, sweatshirts that Molly and Issa had on. Tiffany is like, oh, twinning, okay, y'all twinning. And um, Issa's like, I usually wear this to bed. And Molly's like, I don't. So, you know, right off the bat um, in this episode, we really get into that awkward, slight tension. Obviously, this stems from last season, which was a really rough season as far as Issa and Molly's friendship goes. The writers do a really good job of nuance in this show, right? Um, very good job with um, kind of throwing things in there and where you have to read between the lines or you just feel it. You know, you feel like you're there. You feel like you want to cringe. You feel like you want to say, I got to go to the bathroom or, or hey, you know, let's, uh, let's go get some drinks. Or you feel like you want to jump in and say something because it's so cringy. And they do a great job of that. So that whole line definitely... Um, kind of displays where Issa and Molly are. They are not in the worst place like they were last season, but they're not fully in the swing of things as far as their friendship goes. There's still some holes there. There's still some questions. There's still some, where are we, you know, and are we gonna be cool? And you know, all that type of thing. So semi-awkward, but the good news is that it's way less awkward than last season. So let's just, let's just, let's just be grateful. Molly goes ahead and asks Kelly for advice as far as what she should do with how their relationship is going. How long did it take for Kelly and Tiffany to get back back? And you know, Kelly said something really interesting. She said they were fake back before they were back back. Um, and I was like, wow, you know, like that, I feel like <laughs> that is kind of a common sequence that can happen when you fall out with someone, you know, or when you become distant or when you get into a tough argument, whether it's with a friend, a family, you know, ex, on, ag on again, off again, you know, your parents, whatever it is, you know, I feel like when you do have a big blow up. Uh, whether it's like just one big argument that just happens out of nowhere or whether it's something that's slowly is building for a long time and then it all comes out the road to recovery if you will is not a uh, wham bam we're back you know it definitely can be a slow and steady and and just weird place where you kind of don't want to piss the person off you don't want to say the wrong thing. You don't want to laugh at the wrong time. You don't want to be too serious. Um, you don't want to, you know, cut the person off or just do anything that can ignite them or upset them, you know, because everything's so tender. You know what I mean? It's like when you get cut, you know what I mean? And that's the, and you get cut, you feel the blood, you feel everything. You know what I mean? It's sore, it's burning. You got to put 
clean that uh, cut up with some alcohol, put a bandage on it, you know, but initially it takes time for it to heal. So just because you put the bandage on doesn't mean the wound is fully healed. That part takes time and you also need to care for it as well. So I feel like in this case, you know, Kelly gave some great advice. She gave real, <laughs> real advice. She said, you know, see, you know, really just be there for her. You know, see what, what makes her hair grow. Check if she's still got her two big toes. I ain't never seen it. I just, I love Kelly. <laughs> I really do. She says the most random stuff, but it, it, there's a there's a meaning to it you know you got to kind of sift through um um the the humor to find her messaging but it's always there it's always there isa has started a company oh my gosh you know when i saw that i was so happy you know coming from season one where she was working at that nonprofit, we got y'all it really this is really a full circle moment her working for someone else you know not getting paid a whole lot you know not being independent but not having it all together and working somewhere where she's dealing with you know judgment and stereotypical stuff and uh, race issues and 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 all of these things and going from that to owning her own stuff to doing what she is most passionate about it's amazing so her company is called the block not blow cc we'll we'll talk a little bit about that later but the block that's b-l-o-c-c y'all might not know what it stands for because isa couldn't even remember so i'm gonna let y'all know i'm gonna break it down for you it's black lives opportunities culture connection so it's a little it's a little lengthy but you know i'm rocking with it i like it it speaks to you know block parties live events you know social gatherings it does make me think of that block party that epic block party that she put together last season so i think it's a great name you know and i think once the branding continues to grow people will easily know how to pronounce it and know what it really means so Shout out to Issa for starting her own company. That's huge. Um, so at this 10 year reunion, um, we see the group go to um, an alumni panel, of course, to support Issa, who is speaking on the panel along with a few other um, alumni. And you know, this panel does not go the way she imagines. Um, it's just, <laughs> And the directors did a good job of basically making every answer Issa gave seem just like trash and not witty or deep or philosophical or inspiring enough. But everything else that every other person said was like, wow, oh my God, that's good. And when Issa says something, it's just like crickets. So, you know, I, I feel like they could have given Issa a little bit more love than that, okay? All her answers weren't that bad i think she says some good things they just you know they they had it wrong this scene is to illustrate that isa is still hence the show name insecure and she is still in a lot of ways figuring things out and still unsure uh, of what she's doing and the journey that she's on yes she has made strides yes she has come a long way from season one having her own company having a uh, cultivated some experience um putting on other events networking building and, and partnering with other individuals to make these events come to life but unfortunately she is still not in a place where she feels like she you know got it all together and i think that's a very realistic um take and it's a very realistic feeling because i feel like so many of us especially in our mid-20s you know as well as through our 30s you know depending on what you're into especially in the creative space it's just a constant like you feel like you're going two steps forward and you get knocked back and it doesn't have to be because anybody did anything to you but or anybody is getting in your way or you know they don't believe in you sometimes it could be you you can be the one getting your own way it can be funding issues it could be where you're located it can be the industry the market that you need to reach is just 
you're still figuring that out. Um, it, it can be a lot of things. You know, it can just be the fact that you're just building right now. You're kind of in this space where you just got started. You got to build up your followers. You got to figure out what your brand is and brand identity, the awareness. You got to just have that time to spread what you're trying to do. And uh, I feel like Issa is in the infancy stage of being um, this boss, big boss lady, you know what I mean? And being a real entrepreneur, this is still very early for her. And, you know, I appreciate her being candid about not really knowing if this is going to work out, not really knowing what to say. Everyone had all these great one-liners, you know. I knew I made it when I got my first round of funding. I knew I made it when someone DM'd me asking me for career advice. You know, these are great answers and these are true realistic realizations for people that have made strides in their business but i also like Issa's answer as well should she have said something else faked it a little bit i probably would have this is who Issa is she is unapologetically humbly honest and we appreciate her for it so yeah so the panel was a bit of a fail um the quote that stood out to me from that panel is to be honest there's no way to be sure you've made the right choice. Maybe I'll wake up tomorrow and realize that I've wasted all my time. And that's time I can't really get back. It's real stuff. It is, it's real stuff. It's real things to be concerned about. It's real things that creep up in the back of your mind. Um, yeah, for sure. So Molly and Issa after this walk and get drinks what i noticed here is i feel like molly is definitely willing this forward um a little bit more than isa is like she is really thinking about their relationship she asked her um a little bit later on are we gonna be okay you know so there's really a a, a genuine concern and 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 um hope and interest from Molly's side that she really does want to be good friends with Issa again. Whereas Issa is obviously taking a step back. She's letting things just flow. She's not necessarily closed off, but she's not doing the most either. She's kind of just feeling everything out. And Molly definitely has taken the lead on um, trying to, you know, see where they are and can this thing you know, work itself out. Then we see another highlight of this episode, Cheyenne. Cheyenne is an old friend from college as well, and she definitely brought the energy. She was turned the fuck up. Um, and, you know, it was fun. It was fun seeing them, like, reunite and reconnect. And, you know, they were in a rap group together called, what, Trap, trap Girls or something. But I was here for that. I was like, this is... This is the black experience at, you know what I'm saying, a PWI. This is that feel. It definitely gave me the feels, you know what I mean, of being back on college campus for sure. So that, she was, she was hilarious. <laughs> Another highlight is Kelly being dead. Like, <laughs> like, why did they have to kill Kelly off like that? Like, who, who decided that, yeah. I don't think she's alive anymore. Really? Oh my gosh, Kelly, she passed. Yeah, yeah, I think I remember hearing something about that. Like, who didn't check the damn Facebook or check, uh, check in with your, uh, her family? You know what I mean? Check something to see, did she really die or not? Uh, call your local news. I mean, do something. They let us know what everyone loved about her and I feel like I learned a lot more about Kelly in this episode yes yes I did she had the best stanky leg she always stayed with a purse she knows how to cut out coupons like no man's business like I learned a lot about Kelly in this episode and um yeah I I'm sorry that they killed her off but we also got to appreciate Kelly a little bit more in all of this. She wasn't really here for being killed off, but we did get to see that stanky leg. And, you know, I got to say, it was pretty on point. She, she, definitely, she definitely almost had me standing up, standing up in one spot, about to do the stanky leg left and right. Let us get into um, some of my favorite parts 
of this episode when Issa was like saying hey and waving hi to different people as they're walking through the quad and Tiffany's like girl you know the higher pitch your voice gets the more you lying that you don't remember who that is and she's like hey oh, oh shoot <laughs> hey hey how are you doing and I, I really connected with that I feel like I I do that or at least I've done that in the past like hey girl or hey what is up and my voice does get higher I didn't really understand why that happens but maybe that's why <laughs> maybe it's because I don't remember what their name is I remember faces like you will not believe it but names ooh, that's that's a tough one I, I'm not the best with names I ain't gonna lie to you when I learn it I will remember it for a long time but it's just the journey it's the journey to learning it that's that's the part that's that's rough you know what I mean that takes time oh um, so that part that part was funny to me the girls reunited with Cheyenne that's probably my my favorite part number one for sure of this episode she's just dropping it like it's hot you know what i'm saying <laughs> her and molly start rapping and doing a little two-step cheyenne asking do kelly still got the high leg can she still throw her leg up you know what i'm saying like like she in ballet and kelly did that you know so it was just a fun moment it was a really fun moment i loved molly's uh tangerine outfit like that that was my favorite outfit of the episode like that outfit was she killed that like the costume designer for the show really looks out for molly i swear she is best dressed since season one she's literally been best dressed i love that outfit beautiful another favorite moment for me was isa talking to throwback isa in the mirror that that was my second favorite moment so my first one was cheyenne and then seeing her and kicking it with her and my second one was Issa talking to herself in the mirror. They, I just, it was perfect. You know what I mean? It was, it was such a good scene. The writing for this was so good. Issa with the braces and the little like mini like crop t-shirt. Didn't even look like she had a bra on, but she, she looked younger. They really did make her look younger. How she was talking, she sounded like 10 years younger and saying for show, for shizzle. I'm like, oh my God, these are things we used to say, especially in the Midwest. You know, I grew up in Chicago, so for show, like I always used to say that, you know what I mean? So hearing her say that and asking like, oh, did you meet T-Pain yet? T-Pain was like literally all these references is like, this is how my college experience was. T-Pain was popping, like rapper turned Sanger, like that album, like we played that a lot, like in the car, at parties, like it, it, it really, like they really got it on point. So yeah, this whole exchange, like let me see your teeth, let me see your teeth, show them how you eat, like oh my gosh, like this was, I love to see, I really do. That scene, it really did make me think, you know, about myself and just like, what was I thinking about 10 years ago? Where did I want to see myself 10 years from now and um, you know it's life life is crazy it really is I mean it's it's just interesting and a lot of the things she's talking about is just totally like not, not I wouldn't say not relevant but it just is not it doesn't exist in the same way like T-Pain for example like he he is having a renaissance now winning the mass singer putting out new music and collaborating with you know current artists but you know, for a long time, T-Pain has, like, not been in the music space. People ain't been checking for him, you know. But 10 years ago, he was it, you know what I'm saying? So it, it's just interesting when you think ahead. It's like, oh, like, this is going to be what I'm into, and this is going to be what makes me happy, and this is going to be what I want to do. And 10 years really can tell you a lot. Another favorite moment for sure was the throwback music. I mean, they had it sprinkled in throughout the whole episode. We got to hear Blow the Whistle with the flute girl. She killed it. Stanky Leg, I Love Your Girl by The Dream. You know, so they definitely like threw in some 10 year, 10 year old um, hits. And it definitely did bring me back to my college days. So that was episode one. Those are my thoughts. But I would say this first episode was pretty good. Um, they really jumped into a lot of stories 
And I just love that they decided to go and travel back in time to kind of cover the foundation of Molly and Issa's friendship. Last thing I want to talk about, as you can see, I do got my blue and gold on. <clears throat> um, apparently, there has been a lot of backlash with Amanda Seals wearing AKA letters in this episode. How do I feel about it? Um, and I also was able to find out that they did not actually get clearance, permission, a blessing, a shout out or anything from Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. <sighs> not good, not good. I do not have an issue with them utilizing real divine nine organizations in this show. I think it's great. I don't think that's an issue at all. The issue comes into play with the production team not deciding to do their due diligence and reaching out to somebody. Oh, and my last favorite part from this episode was Cheyenne setting Molly and Issa up to get robbed at the damn liquor store. Like, are you freaking kidding me? Like, Oh my gosh, like that shit was hilarious. What? <laughs> oh my God, the robber is like, shy, calm down. They're like, shy? <laughs> she's like, oh shit. <laughs> and they're like, hey, she's like, hey, shit change. Come up off them shoes. <laughs> oh my God, Issa, why was Issa so eager to give her shoes up too? She like, oh, oh no, 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 you, you, you can keep those. <laughs> Yo, that was the funniest thing ever. Like, what is going on? Like, oh my gosh. But the beauty of her doing that trifling ass shit is that it literally brought Issa and Molly right back to where they need to be, you know, which is good friends, supporting each other, laughing joking and cracking on each other. This is what they needed. This is what we needed. So all in all, thank you, Cheyenne. You trifling as hell, but you know what? You 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 did a great thing. I don't even think you knew. I don't even think you knew, but you did a great thing. And now because of you, Issa and Molly can be good friends again. They were able to laugh and bust out, I mean, like from the pit of their belly, they was laughing with each other. And it was a beautiful moment and it, it, it really sets the tone for, okay, okay, we're, we're in a good place. We are in a good place. So I love that. I love that. That's it. Those are all my thoughts, my favorite moments, the highlights from episode one. Leave your comments. What's your favorite part of this episode? And I will see y'all next time. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Bye.